Hi, it's Mick in Canada with a Roaring Peacock Leads Overseas Match Day Review and Preview. So hands up if you thought we were going to come away with anything out of that match against Chelsea. I'll wait. Me neither. What a delightful match it was, though. A nil-nil draw, I think, was uh, a well-deserved point for us. Uh, the match really could have resulted in a 1-0, I think, to either side. A 1-1 draw would have also been a fair result, uh, given how the match played out and the chances that were created. But overall, I would have to say I'm very happy with a clean sheet against a team with the firepower of Chelsea. And uh, very happy to, uh, to come away with a point. Uh, against a team that really haven't dropped very many since uh, Thomas Tuchel took over uh, from Frank Lampard. Stop crying. And um, yeah, uh, given how difficult a time Chelsea gave us when we played them uh, down in London, granted the match was somewhat disrupted by Robin Koch going off injured uh, and Llorente coming in for his first uh, for his first match uh, after having been injured, um, which, you know, the sort of uh, disruption to the spine of your team does cause problems. We were well and truly beaten that day. And so I think this match uh, really showed how far we've come uh, as, a, as a team this season. In, how much uh, maturity we're playing with. Um, you know, it's one of those games, uh, one of the very, very rare occasions where uh, the other side dominates the ball. And in fact, Chelsea had more possession against us uh, in this most recent match than I think any team has ever since Marcelo Bielsa took the reins at Leeds United. So in that way, it was an unusual match, I think, for Leeds United fans to watch. Um, but we also showed some of our own attacking endeavor, uh, even if we were uh, dominated in terms of possession. I don't think we ever gave up upon our attacking, attacking instincts, uh, and we did create some great chances, including a beautiful chip by, uh, by Tyler Roberts, which was just this close really off the tip of their goalkeeper's finger uh, and onto the bar from, from going off under on the underside of the bar and, and probably into the net. So, uh, Tyler is, uh, <laughs> he's had some bad luck and he's really deserves to have a few goals, I think to his credit. So maybe he's got, um, maybe he's got some in the bank, uh, saving up and he'll, uh, he'll be able to, to cash in soon. Um, it was a bit frightening, I think, to see uh, Patrick Bamford go off injured. Uh, frightening because, uh, one, the injury looked like um, it could have sidelined him for a while. And thankfully, it sounds like he's going to be back uh, for the match against Fulham, which we'll talk about in a moment. But um, it really sent a shiver down my spine um, as I contemplated the fact that we really don't have uh, much by way of squad depth. Someone that can come in and play that role. And yes, we have Tyler Roberts who can play nine. Yes, we have Rodrigo who can play that role as well. But no one really plays it the same way that Patrick Bamford does. And neither Rodrigo or Tyler Roberts have really been used in that kind of a role, or at least not very much in our team. And so... You know, I guess when it comes to Patrick Bamford, it's like that nobody does it better, right, than, than he does uh, the way that Bielsa wants him to play that role. And so, you know, it just it just reminded me that we do need, uh, you know, some more time to settle in, to build the squad um, and, you know, to, to make sure that we have a team that can compete throughout the entire season uh, moving forward at a very high level. So another summer uh, transfer window for us. Uh, as I said before, I think we're safe. I think we can look forward to a transfer window. I don't know if a striker is going to be someone that they bring in, but certainly filling out the midfield a bit more. Maybe we'll release Tyler Roberts or, or Rodrigo to play up front more often as well, potentially. But um, it's a process, and I trust it. So we go down to London, and we're going to play Fulham at Craven Cottage, um, and we're going to break the London curse, right? Of course we are. Uh, it's our last match in London this season, and I think it's time we put that curse to bed. Um, I don't know if we've got garlic bulbs or steaks or something, but we need to slay that thing, and this is the match where I think we can finally do it. Now, I'm not usually someone to go against trends, and the trend in this case does say we're going to go down to London and we're going to come back with a big fat bagel. Nothing, zero points, we lose, 
game over. But I think it's going to be different. I think that match we just played against Chelsea is the type of match that can galvanize a team to go on for the rest of the season. I think that the the boys really showed, as I said before, the maturity. I think they showed a lot of fortitude. I think uh, maybe even there's some parallels between how we played uh, against Chelsea after having a little bit of a rough patch and how we played uh, when we went down to Brentford last season. Um, there may be a bit of a parallel there just in terms of uh, how the match can be sort of a galvanizing kind of thing to push on for the for the rest of the season. So I think uh, we we've reached the point in our season where um, we're probably feeling pretty good about where we are. I think we know we only need a couple of more points to basically guarantee safety, but we're probably feeling pretty safe right now. And I think we can go down there and get a result. I really do. Uh, Fulham are a team uh, that press very well, uh, very high. I know there's some question about Scott Parker's tactical nous. Um, they don't have a lot of, of um, really great sort of tactical or identifiable tactical play, except that they are very good at pressing, which is something that we're also very good at, but something that we struggle to play against. And so, you know, much like the way that Southampton played uh, against us, also a very high pressing style of football, so that gig and press uh, style of football, um, you know, we figured out a way in the match against Southampton to play over the press. Um, and we may be able to, you know, take some of that, uh, some of those learned lessons on how to play a team like that and maybe bring them into the full match and, and do something similar if necessary. Um, I often find a way of working a cliche into these things, and so I'll do it again. First goal is going to be the most important. And the reason I say that is that if Fulham score first, we know what's going to happen. They're going to shrink into themselves. They're going to set up in a low block. They're going to play narrow. They're going to pack the box. And we're going to have one of those very frustrating games like we've had against Aston Villa this year, uh, like we saw in the championship so many times when another team that you know maybe doesn't play uh, the same way that we do, or they're more than, you know, they're happy to give up, uh, you know, sort of the superiority of the ball um, just to absorb as much pressure as they can. And we just end up frustrated for, you know, 80 minutes. So if Fulham score first, that's possibly what will happen. Uh, if we score first, they're going to have to play more open. They're fighting for their lives. Um, and when they play open, that puts them at our mercy. I think that we're going to go into the game confident. And I think we're going to come away with three points. I think we're going to kill the curse. And, uh, and I think uh, we're going to be safe. And we have a lot to look forward to. So I look forward to this weekend. And I hope you do too. Bye-bye. What the crack? This is uh, all Leeds overseas here on the Roar and Peacock. I am, of course, Scott, your big fat Leeds, Leeds, Leeds supporter. Uh, yeah, so this is just my, my reaction uh, to what I have felt like was a win um, in our scoreless draw against Chelsea. Um, and let me just say, wasn't that the sexiest boar draw you have ever seen? There's nothing boring about it. And in hindsight, I'm going, how did we not win that? Both teams very, very even, but both teams lacking in uh, finishing. Um, but we were the only team that actually looked like possibly scoring. Uh, that's the truth. That's, that's what I think anyway. Um, Tyler Roberts, how unfortunate was he? Um, and how fortunate was Mendy? Because let's be honest, that, that shot hits the crossbar and bounces towards the keeper. If that's the lead's end, well, that's hitting off the keeper and going in. Um, but then again, uh, on the other side of the pitch, you know, look, he's trying to clear the ball and it whacks off uh, Diego Llorente's dome and hits the crossbar and thankfully goes straight in to the French Terminator's hands himself. Speaking of the French Terminator, I've seen he was, uh, in the Europe, was he in the European team of the week? Uh, along with another future Leeds Hall of Famer. Rodrigo de Paul, you handsome devil, ye. Uh, so that, that, uh, the whole Leeds-Chelsea game, that was beautiful. It was a great game of football. It really was. 
And it's hard to believe there were no there were no goals in it. It really is hard to believe nobody scored in that match. Um, but what what a partnership! I thought that the magic shown in the partnership between Strike and Urente was just absolutely wonderful, absolutely wonderful. Um, defensively. I would like to think that we're going to keep that. Sorry, just trim my beard and stuff. And I'm feeling a wee bit funny because I, I had that vaccine there as well, uh, and I'm 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 feeling a bit I'm feeling a bit out of sorts, shall we say? Um, but yes, that was that. Uh, now just before the international break, we are taking our last trip to to London uh, this season, where we're playing Fulham away. Um. Surely we're going to win that. Surely. Surely we can't go and play friggin' Scott Cardigan's Fulham and not come with anything, you know, come away with anything less than three points and a, and a Harry from Paddy. Like, definitely, you know, Bamford uh, is fit to be playing. Um, at this point in time, I have not seen about uh, who England's taking to the Euros or who's getting a call up here um, for these international games. That's how I feel on the international. It's wick. wick. Um, I really don't care. Me personally, I really don't care who from Leeds is called up. Um, the less I get called up, the better, in my opinion. Because I don't want them injured. I don't want them injured. And... There's just something about whenever, like when Calvin Phillips went and played for England, when he came back, he was crap for a couple of games. I don't want that to happen because after this international break, we need our boys to be at their best. So please, Mister Southgate, just leave Bamford and Elling alone. That's that's just from a selfish standpoint of my own. Uh, but for Bamford and Elling themselves, well, do you know what? It would be great experience for them, and it would be great to put. On their career. So I Give them a shot. <sighs> right. As for Fulham. With Bamford being fit. If we go with that same line up. Um, as last week. I can really see us. like We can do a number on Fulham. I really do. We're going to end. We're going to put an end. To this curse. We are. The curse began. Five years ago. Or just after five years ago, uh, when we beat Fulham in London. And after that, we have only won one game in London ever since that. So I think it's only fitting that we end the curse with Fulham since it started there. That's, that's what I'm going to say anyway. And I'm going to say we're going to absolutely do a number on them. So I... Um, that's that's all I have to say on that. Um, I'm gonna go with, with Leeds, just tanking them, just tanking them. That's it. Now I'm gonna go and lay down and moan and complain about that vaccine that's absolutely knocked my pan on. Leeds, 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 on, 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 Leeds, 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 Leeds. Leeds. I'm Paul Walls and coming to you from County Offaly in the heart of Ireland. And I'm donning my Irish jersey this week for St. Patrick's Week. So here's hoping Friday night we can get a big result against Fulham. And let's look back at Chelsea first. Chelsea leads. Well, here. That was a good point, wasn't it? I thought it was alright. I thought we played very well, held our own, deserved a point. They had their chances. The own goal early on they could have had. Oh, when they hit the, when they hit the crossbar, my heart melted. But then Roberts had a great chance before that. Hit the crossbar. Really good game by Roberts. As I said before, I really want Roberts to kick on. I thought he was very poor against West Ham. Good game the last day. If he just got a goal, because like, he, he is the player that could fit into that Bamford role. If he kicked on from this, got a goal. Like <clears throat> I thought Bamford might have been ruled out for Friday night, but it looks like he's going to be fit. Rodrigo looks like he's injured, so he'll probably still stay in that number 10 role that he plays in. But really liked Roberts to kick on from this. He's a player I want to succeed. I want him to earn his new contract. I want him to do it. He, and he, he's, when he plays well, he's, he just he can see that capability. But he hasn't always been as consistent. So we need, we need, we need, basically he needs to earn this contract. He needs to play these more better games like this. And he needs to get goals. At the back, looking at the least how we performed, I thought, um, I thought uh, strike coming in late. I thought very, very well. 
with Lorenzo, great performance. I thought Phillips was very good. I thought Costa when he came on did very well. I thought it was a very good performance by Leeds across the I thought Harrison was a little bit poor. That was the worst game. I thought Costa did better when he came on. Good impact sub. Again, he did very well, even though he had been poor in the previous games he'd started. Uh, Bamford he wasn't having a great game before he went off. It wasn't the worst game, but I was hoping that the hip injury just didn't aggravate. I thought he could have went off sooner. He just tried to run it off and it doesn't always work that way. So, no, all in all, a good point. Tuchel's a good manager. He has him set up well. He would have, Chelsea fans would have been expected to win that. Listen to some of the some of their watch alongs and stuff like that. They were really they weren't too happy about it. They, there is a good there's a bite in the Chelsea Leeds rivalry and they really feel they have a good edge on us and they won't like dropping two points to us. And it's a good result, these fans. It's a good result. Obviously we'd love to beat Chelsea, but it's a good result. And moving on to Friday night, Leeds Fulham, the London Hoodoo. Will it continue? Well looking at the table and looking where we are, we should definitely be and talking to fans during the week and stuff like that people say we have to be Fulham Jesus Christ if we don't beat Fulham there's something wrong but the fact of the matter is <clears throat> Newcastle and Brighton I think are, have been two teams in free fall whereas Fulham I think haven't been as such they haven't lost that many games they've drawn a lot of games they haven't won as many but they've drawn a lot of games and they, they don't look a bad team I've no doubt that it'll be a tough game Friday night but if we need this is the game that we should be using if we don't break the London hoodie with this there's a lot of tough games we used to play in London towards the end of the season and coming into next season so this is the type of game that we should be. And we, we are good enough. We play to our strengths. We should be good enough to beat Fulham. We've beaten them the last few times we played them. Now it was at Ellen Road. We haven't beaten them in Craven Cottage in six years. But look. The fact of the matter is. It's Friday night. It's London. Scott Parker will be out with his best cardigan I'm sure. Try, strutting his stuff. Thinking he, he knows it all about Leeds. He's played it so many times. He's got the upper hand. But we will see. Leeds. Rafinha, definitely capable. Rafinha, Phillips on form. Rodrigo's ruled out. Roberts gets that goal. Bamford's fit. He's playing. Cooper's still out, obviously. Like if we if we play like we did against Chelsea, we should get a result and we should get three points. And this should be the game to do it. But London Friday night bring us on to a good weekend, and here's hoping for three points. I think we will, and I think we're going to do it. Leeds, Leeds, Leeds. On, on, on. What's going on, Roaring Peacock? Alex Leeds fan from US. Will we beat the London Curse? Will we beat the London Curse? First up, an analysis of Chelsky, aka the Kremlin. I'm happy with that. I thought they, I said going into the game, I wanted to see a clean sheet mentality. They did a great job. I was worried a little bit about Alioski um, against Pulisic. Uh, I thought Pulisic was going to torture him all game long after a couple of balls into the box, which were worrisome. Credit the North Macedonian international. He did the job, and he actually probably got the best of Pulisic the rest of the game. Really great adjustment. I was impressed by him. You know, he's a wild card. He's either, you know, effectively wild or ineffectively wild, and uh, I was uh, I was impressed. He always is like seems like sometimes a half a step behind some of the best wingers in the league, but he did the job and uh, that was great. I was actually thinking about I was calling for Shackleton uh, after the first couple balls in. I was going because he just was a he just seemed a half a step behind Pulisic. So, um, happy for him. Uh, another, my man of that match was Pascal Struik. Struik. I'm not sure how we're pronouncing him right now, but he is an amazing center back. Terrible at the, I don't want to say terrible, but not ideal at Cam. Not ideal at, at Phillips' position, but I think he's really class. I think it's going to be amazing to see him grow. I hope. I read that I think he's in the third year of a three-year deal with Leeds. So I'm hoping we can re-up him. Um, but yeah, I think we might look back um, and say we had Ben White and Pascal Struick on the same roster. They're both going to be world-class defenders. I'm hoping Pascal stays with the club. 
Um, I'm impressed with the depth. When we signed two center backs over the summer, we've used all of them, <laughs> and we've had 13 center back pairings. Obviously, they said that in the broadcast, which is crazy. Um, and I was impressed with uh, Urente. Uh, this game, I thought he played well. And it was just good to see two giants and two big center backs um, playing alongside Havertz, who's big. We were able to match him. I mean, he would walk in between our two center backs, and our two center backs are as big as he is. And um, at least in the case of Stroik, I've seen his aerial abilities, so he can, I don't want to say jump with him, but he can get pretty close, so... I was just very impressed. Phillips was was really strong. Um, you know, he does his thing, and we, we don't really even mention it. Um, and then I got to mention Roberts. Tyler Roberts, at times, I was, you know, the last few games before uh, Chelsky, I thought that Roberts was just not as far as... Um, talent and class wise what Rodrigo is Rodrigo Moreno um, but Rodrigo when he got subbed on did not have the work rate that um, obviously Pat Patrick Bamford ha has and that's a requirement for a Bielsa team is to have that work rate and uh, movement without the ball and I was actually really disappointed in Rodrigo who's our big signing over the summer you know biggest Biggest signing in club history. I know he's coming back, but um, his work rate when he came in was not up to par. He had to be subbed off. I thought that was a brilliant call by Bielsa. Um, he switched um, Tyler Roberts into the nine, and he had a higher work rate. And um, he's getting himself into position. So that's right. I mean, that's what's important. He's putting himself into position. The goals will come if he continues to put himself in those positions. We all get upset because sometimes he sails the ball into the stands. But he, that final touch, I think, will come. It's been coming. He's had a couple of disallowed goals. So, oh, man, that effort on the side of the box where he was trying to curl one in. Wow, that was that was impressive. So um, Tyler Roberts is going to keep his space. Um, obviously, it's a question of whether Patrick Bamford comes back for Fulham. Um, so let's move on to Fulham. If there's going to be a game where we, we break the London hoodoo, it's got to be Fulham. And the reason I say that is because not only are they – on the bottom half of the table. They're a very talented team that we have to take seriously and who we almost let come back and get a result against Leeds. And they're going to be difficult to beat. But the reason I say that is we have a familiar... We're, it's a familiar stadium. Um, it's not like we're going into these big three clubs in London where it was like Arsenal, Tottenham, and, and Chelsea and we're going, oh man, this is... I don't know, big time. Um, we're used to that environment. I think the team has gone into uh, the stadium off the River Thames before. So just that is important. And um, so I think I like our chances. All I want us to do is to put chances in into the box and continue to put chances into the box. And again, clean sheet. I want to continue to see our movement and our work rate without the ball continue to increase. I was super impressed by that. So do I think it'll end? I think, I think it'll end. I think it'll be close. So I think it'd be a nail biter. So uh, big game Friday night, um, big win, big, I don't want to say must win, but it's very important that we go into Friday with a win, come out Friday with a win, and go into the international break without a bitter taste in our mouth. Because that'll be just um, two weeks of um, just, I think, people worrying about, you know, whether we're falling or not. So I'm interested in, in getting this is an important win. I don't want to say it's a must win, but it's a very important win. I want to see a result. I want to see a continuation of a clean sheet. Leads, leads, leads!
Hi, this is Simon in Hong Kong. So my verdict for the Chelsea match was, uh, well, I thought it was alright really overall. It was uh, pretty positive. I thought that we played well. Uh, in midfield, we stopped those those runs from Jorginho and, uh, and the other midfielders and, and from the wing-backs. I thought Ailing did very well against Mount uh, as well. And yeah, we, we defended well. We were very difficult to get through in midfield, which in times this season has been a weakness of ours, where teams have just run at us through midfield. And also I think that um, in attack, although we didn't create a lot of chances, I thought we were pretty dangerous. And we certainly had the better chances, uh, even though we didn't have as much possession as they did. Certainly under Tuchel, they've gone into a much more possession-based game. So yeah, it's probably the only time this season where we've had so much um, the opposition's had so much uh, possession, possession against us. But no, I thought we, we handled it well and we looked like uh, we'd learned a lot uh, from these last games in the Premier League and uh, we seem to be getting a little bit better each time, which is great to see. Regarding Fulham, um, that's a different kettle of fish because Fulham, uh, I think... Uh, They've come. They've got a lot better recently. Of course, that headline result against Liverpool, which was amazing. Although Liverpool were pretty depleted, they were certainly going for the Champions League, uh, prioritising the Champions League fixture. That's for sure. Um, nevertheless, you know they they have got a bit of form, but they're down in the table for a reason. I don't think they're very strong defensively. I think they're pretty slow. It would be good to see Rafinha go against them because uh, last time around he, he wasn't quite ready for the side. So I think if he has a, a few runs, especially when he cuts in and uh, and dribbles past a couple of players, it's not always exciting, but it, it makes them back off a lot more and gives us more space. So I think this game will go pretty well. And it's still not clear whether Bamf will be playing. There have been hints that that, that from Bielsa that Bamford would be ready but even if he's not um, I think if you put Tyler Roberts up front and uh, Rodrigo in number 10 I think that will cause Fulham a lot of problems too um, they've not been so dangerous up front recently they um, although they can always get at us of course and, and, and they know how to play as they've played as enough times recently so of course it's not a given but uh, I'm pretty hopeful for this one I think we'll get those three points and that will bring us on to the Magic 39, and, and that should, even for me, make us safe. Most of our stats come from LUFC Stats or LUFC Data on Twitter. A very special thanks to Barney Stewart, Cookie Ewan, and Howard Metcalf, Josh Pearson, Laura, Leon, and Rob, The Light Show, and all our family and friends. So many games to play, don't care what's